Why should we cultivate Buddha Chitta when reaching uh, the stage of summit? The three turnings of the Dharma wheel by the Buddha are the system based on gradual teachings. The great perfection or the Chan school are the special transmission outside the scriptures or the system based on direct realization. The system based on gradual teachings, including the three vehicles, encompasses four stages of the path of joining. The four stages of practice in Theravada, Mahayana and the Supreme Vehicle are different. They are all practices before the path of seeing, which is available in the three vehicles. On the other hand, the system based on direct realization is not about entering the path of seeing, but about seeing the nature of reality. Hence, they are different. When practicing the path to liberation, after reaching the stage of warmth or the stage of summit, one should cultivate Buddha Chitta. This means that after understanding no self in person, apart from regularly meditating on no self in person, one should also cultivate Buddha Chitta. This is because after cultivating no self in person for a long time, one may fall into the extreme of emptiness. Without cultivating bodhicitta, one will be more and more inclined to achieve individual enlightenment and liberation. After entering the path of joining, one will be very prone to clinging to concentration, enlightenment and liberation. In fact, Hinayana practitioners have attachments. The Buddha said that, strictly speaking, without truly cultivating Buddhicitta, even the Hinayana path is considered as a non-Buddhist path because they haven't entered the middle way. Generally speaking, the human and heavenly path and the path to liberation are considered as necessary stages of Buddhist practice. However, without cultivating bodhicitta, the path is not right as one will be inclined to achieve individual liberation rather than Buddhahood. Only after cultivating bodhicitta can one truly embark on the path to Buddhahood. Therefore, if Hinayana practitioners cultivate no self in person for a long time, they will fall into the extreme of emptiness and cannot generate great compassion, let alone bodhicitta. When practicing the path to liberation, as one reaches the stage of acceptance, their afflictions gradually diminish, like descending a mountain. After reaching the stage of summit, it becomes easier to engage in further practice, easier than ascending the mountain. As a result, their afflictions diminish quickly, with fewer and fewer afflictions, and less and less suffering. If one doesn't have much suffering, it's difficult to arouse great compassion. No matter how much you persuade them, they don't want to generate great compassion. When the Buddha imparted the Mahayana teachings, all Hinayana practitioners left. When he talked about cultivating bodhicitta and generating great aspirations, those practitioners left. They didn't want to listen. Instead, they went into the forest to practice the path to liberation. Why do so many people in the Theravada tradition say the Mahayana teachings were not imparted by the Buddha? It's because they haven't heard the Mahayana teachings. After learning the path to liberation, 
they left. This is quite normal. Since they haven't heard the Mahayana teachings, it's natural for them to say the Mahayana teachings were not imparted by the Buddha. Therefore, at this stage, it's very difficult to cultivate Buddha Chitta. After attaining the first stage of awakening, it becomes even more difficult to cultivate Buddha Chitta. They definitely cannot generate Buddha Chitta. That's why it's very difficult for Hinayana practitioners to transition to the Mahayana path, since they strongly aspire for liberation from samsara and have less suffering, and they haven't cultivated great compassion in their past lives, it's difficult for them to cultivate it now. Simply put, it's because they lack the inherent qualities of a Mahayana practitioner. Therefore, we need to cultivate Buddha Chitta when we are ordinary beings. This is because we have suffering, so we can empathize with others. The deeper we experience the three types of suffering, the easier it becomes to arouse our great compassion. This is crucial. Hence, we should see all sentient beings as our mothers, which will naturally trigger our compassion. When we ourselves experience suffering, it's easier for us to recall the suffering of our parents. Cultivating bodhicitta while being an ordinary being is much faster and easier than cultivating bodhicitta after attaining the first stage of awakening. Don't think that you need to attain the first or even the fourth stage of awakening before cultivating bodhicitta, as that would be too late. This is an important tip. Don't go astray. Otherwise, it would be problematic. After cultivating Buddha Chitta and aspiration well, one can then cultivate the Mahayana wisdom of emptiness, the dependent arising and the nature of emptiness. By extensively learning and contemplating the Mahayana wisdom of dependent arising and no self in phenomena and generating a firm conviction, one can start practicing the four stages of the path of joining of dependent arising and the nature of emptiness. This means that after reaching the stage of warmth or the stage of summit, one can meditate on the teachings of the Great Middle Way and Yogacara. The teachings of the Great Middle Way and Yogacara are two sides of the same coin. Some may wonder, aren't the Middle Way and Yogacara contradictory? In fact, they are not contradictory, they are two aspects of the same truth. Only when you truly understand Yogacara can you understand the Great Middle Way. And only when you truly understand the Great Middle Way can you understand its other aspect, Yogacara. They are two sides of the same coin. Only knowing one side is not enough, which indicates that you haven't thoroughly understood it. After you have thoroughly understood it, you will find that this is the definitive teaching of the Buddha. After extensively studying and contemplating the wisdom of emptiness of the Great Middle Way and Yogacara, and developing a firm conviction, one can then start practicing at the four stages of the path of joining of the Supreme Vehicle. This means that after reaching the stage of warmth or the stage of summit, close to entering the path of seeing, one will be able to find a truly enlightened teacher. Only at that stage will one be able to discern such a teacher. 
Merely understanding the wisdom of emptiness of the great middle way and Yogacara is not enough. It's also essential to practice and realize it. After reaching at the stage of warmth or the stage of summit, one can find a truly enlightened teacher. The Buddhas and Buddhasattvas will also bless one to practice the great perfection or Chan meditation. This is because at this stage, one hasn't attained the final enlightenment. Thus, one still has doubts and needs to ponder profound meditation topics. This is the shortest shortcut. You cannot directly jump to advanced practices. This is the path walked by the great masters. What I am sharing with you is not available in books. No one will teach you this. Even if you search through books, you won't find it. These are the peace instructions transmitted orally by the great masters. Some teachers may privately share these peace instructions with disciples who have sharp faculties. Now, I am openly sharing them with you to make you realize your current spiritual level and primarily to make you know a general direction of your practice. The past Chan masters, only after practicing and realizing the wisdom of emptiness, of no self in person, no self in phenomena, Yogacara and the great middle way, would have doubts such as, who is reciting at the Buddha's name? If one doesn't possess the wisdom of no self in person and no self in phenomena, then it is the self in person or self in phenomena that recites the Buddha's name, isn't it? Some people might think, you ask who is reciting the Buddha's name, isn't it obvious that I am reciting the Buddha's name? This is quite normal. Why would there be doubts? This is because they lack wisdom. After one has the wisdom of emptiness, they will realize that it is not I that recites the Buddha's name. Without I, who is reciting the Buddha's name, then a doubt arises. Only at this point will doubts arise. If one doesn't have wisdom, they will believe that I am reciting the Buddha's name and the I is either the self in person or self in phenomena. In this case, they won't have doubts. If one doesn't have the wisdom of emptiness in Yogacara, they will think that it is their mind that is reciting the Buddha's name. So why would there be doubts? When pondering who is reciting the Buddha's name, they will think it is the mind that is reciting the Buddha's name, isn't it? In this case, they won't have doubts either. After you have the wisdom of emptiness in Yogacara, you will realize that the mind itself is also illusory. It's not the mind that recites the Buddha's name. The mind itself is illusory, so how can it recite the Buddha's name? It is like a shadow. How can the shadow on the wall recite the Buddha's name? It has no inherent nature. Similarly, the mind has no inherent nature, so how can it recite the Buddha's name? Therefore, only after the wisdom of emptiness in Yogacara arises can doubts arise. How can today's people understand this? They don't understand what it means to have doubts. Doubts arise only after one has cultivated and realized the wisdom of emptiness in the three vehicles. Some Chan practitioners who haven't even cultivated and realized no self in person in Hinayana 
just sit and recite meditation topics. They are not pondering at meditation topics. Instead, they are repeatedly reciting who is reciting the Buddha's name without any doubts. In the eyes of the wise, this is meaningless and absurd. Regardless of the Dharma, after fully understanding it and completing the path of accumulation, you must engage in actual practice. After reaching a certain level, such as the stage of warmth or the stage of summit, you can then proceed to the subsequent practices, and the practices in the previous stage will naturally be completed. If you have never engaged in actual practice and only have intellectual understanding, then attempting to directly engage in advanced practices will definitely not yield any results. When you reach the stage of summit, such as the stage of summit of realizing no self in person, if you cultivate bodhicitta and then continue to practice no self in person, you will attain the fruition swiftly. You may not even need to practice it. Once your bodhicitta arises, you may attain the fruition instantly which is faster than the Hinayana way. Some people claim to be Chan practitioners and belittle the path to liberation and the exoteric teachings of Mahayana Buddhism. They haven't cultivated the emptiness of no self in person and no self in phenomena, yet they directly practice Chan meditation or the great perfection. As a result, After practicing for decades or even a lifetime, they make no progress at all. How pitiable and sad. To determine whether one has attained enlightenment, it's essential to have a qualified teacher to verify and confirm it. Otherwise, one would be arrogant to claim enlightenment without actually having attained it. Many non-Buddhist practitioners practice the four meditations and eight concentrations. When they attain the fourth meditative absorption or beyond, they might mistakenly believe that they have transcended the three realms and liberated from samsara. After emerging from the meditative absorption, they slander the Dharma. As a result, they fall into the three lower realms. Some Chan practitioners in China, when accidentally experiencing some thoughtless states or empty states in the four meditations and eight concentrations, or the states of the four heavens in the formless realm, mistakenly believe that they have seen the nature of reality. This is equivalent to telling a major lie without being aware of it, and the consequence is alarming. As practitioners, we must pay attention to this. 